Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So in this video, I'm going to talk about adding a next-gen screen to an MMDVM digital hotspot. So many of you likely own some form of digital hotspot. And while this isn't a new thing, you can actually add a large next-gen display to show you all sorts of information from your hotspot as it's running. Now the size of the display that I have in this video is a 3.5 inch display, but you can add any of the supported sizes, which range from two up to seven inches. Now to get this working with your existing MMDVM does take a little setup, but hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to perform this task in a breeze. So first off, you need to obtain your next gen screen. As mentioned before, I'm using the 3.5 inch as it's not too big and not too small, kind of just about right. Connection from the next gen display to the MMDVM hotspot can be done in two ways. You can either connect the display directly to the MMDVM board, or you can use a USB to TTL converter and then plug that into one of the available USB ports on your Raspberry Pi. Now there are only four wires coming from the display. Now these are a five volt line, a ground, and a TX and RX line. Now the reason for using the USB to TTL converter for the next in display is that speeds up to 115200 board is supported. Now I was only ever able to get 9600 board working through the modem display connections. However, in this video, I'll show you how to connect it both ways. As well as having the next-gen display, you also need the next-gen layout editor, which unfortunately is only available on Windows. You also need a next-gen screen layout. I'll show you shortly where you can download some examples that others have made. If you have a USB to TTL converter, you can also use this to upload the layout from the software to the display, which sometimes makes this easier, but it does take quite some time to upload, especially if the layout has lots of stored images. So the other way to upload the layout to the next in screen will be to write the layout file to a micro SD card from your computer. You then would insert that into the next in display and power it up. As it powers up, it will automatically update. Now this is by far the quickest method of uploading a layout to the display once you actually have a layout file you like. So the first thing we need to do is find a suitable screen layout. So for this demonstration, we're going to load a box standard layout that is available from the MMDVM host GitHub page. To make things easy, just click the green code button and select download as zip. And once downloaded, uncompress the zip file and then navigate to the Nexton G4 KLX folder. Here you'll see a list of .hmi files. These are the files which can be loaded directly into the Nexton editor. The file name should match the model number of your Nexion display. So for me, I'm going to select the file ending T035, which represents a basic 3.5 inch screen. Double click on this file and it should then load into the Nexion editor, assuming that you have it installed. If not, go and install it. If you see any pop-ups, just click on OK, as these will most likely be warning you that the current version of Nexion editor will upgrade the layout's format. Now I'm not going to go into any of the screens here as that could potentially be an entire separate video. One extra setting that I am going to make on this layout is by adding the line board equals 9600 to the pre-installation event on the MMDVM idle screen. This is because in the first example, we're going to connect the display to the MMDVM board itself. And so far I've only managed to get it working on 9600. So making sure you have your blank micro SD card inserted into your computer, you can now select file and then TFT file output. Select the SD card as the destination and click OK. This should then write the TFT file to the SD card. So remove the SD card from your computer and then insert it into the display's SD card slot. Connection to the MMDVM board itself is like this. I had to add the pins to the board, but there are only four of them, so it's quite easy. Attach the 5 volt to 5 volt, the ground to ground, RX to TX, and TX to RX. Power on the hotspot, and the display should now start loading the TFT file from the SD card. Once finished, power off the MMDVM and remove the SD card from the display. 
You can now power back on the MMDVM and be presented with the MMDVM logo on the display. Now, unless you've already set this up in PyStar, the display won't do anything just yet. So let's look at the settings on PyStar to get the display working. So on the configuration page under MMDVM configuration, you'll notice a display setting. Change the MMDVM display type to NextGen, the port to modem, and the NextGen layout to G4KLX, and then click on apply changes. At this point, you can connect to a reflector and sit back and watch the NextGen display start showing live data as people are talking. Now this is a very basic layout more or less a demo test layout. And there are many, many more out there that users have created and shared with us. To find these more exciting display layouts, you can either search the internet using Google, or if you are a Facebook user, you can join the NextGen Screen Facebook group. Now, the group contains hundreds of files that other users have created. Now, one thing to mention is that not everyone has the same screen type, and not everybody connects their display via the modem. In fact, if you connect the display to the MMDVM's Raspberry Pi via a TTL to USB converter, you can get up to 115,000 board rate. This in turn makes screen refreshes a lot quicker than using the modem. Another thing to watch out for when downloading third-party screen layouts is the device type that the layout is designed for. This must match your display unless you're willing to do some extensive editing on the NextGen editor. For now, I would suggest only downloading layouts which are designed for your NextGen screen. So now I'm going to load a new layout which provides a whole load more information. Now loading the new layout onto the screen is the same process as before using the micro SD card. I'm also going to connect the NextGen display to the Raspberry Pi via a TTL to USB adapter. However, there are a couple of settings that we will need to change in PyStar and we'll also need to install the NextGen driver so that we can get all of the fields populated. With the screen plugged into the Pi, we need to set the appropriate port and layout within PyStar. Here you can see I've selected USB 0 port and the ON7 LDS HS layout. The HS stands for high speed. If we take a look at the display, it appears to be working and populating the fields with data. However, we have some fields missing. Now these are missing because we need to route the output from PyStar through a special NextGen driver. So let's install this driver now. Using the PyStar's built-in SSH client, we can log into the Pi using PyStar for the login name and Raspberry for the password. Once logged in, we need to enable write access by typing rpi-rw and then pressing enter. We now need to remove any instances or old installations of the NextGen driver by using this command. Now we cd into forward slash tmp and then git clone the NextGen driver project locally. Once downloaded, we can run the installer by using this command. Once installation has finished, the Pi will automatically reboot. Now this will take a little longer than normal, so please be patient and do not unplug the power while it's booting up. Once the Pi is fully booted and you have web access again to the Pi Star, navigate to the MMDVM host settings page. Scroll down and make sure there is a one next to enable on the transparent data section. Then scroll down to the next gen section and make sure the port is set to forward slash dev forward slash TTY next gen driver as shown here. Now underneath this, you'll find the next gen driver settings. Make sure the port is set to the USB port your display is plugged into. For me, it's forward slash dev forward slash TTY USB zero. You can now press apply changes and the new layout with the NextGen driver should start working as required. If not, go back to the configuration page and make sure that you've selected the ON7 LDS L3 HS layout as shown here. You can also now see that the missing data fields are now populated showing you information such as CPU temperature, CPU speed, etc. Now all you need to do is put this into a neat little plastic box and leave it running on your shack desk.
One other cool feature with this display is that it's touchscreen, so buttons can be made to control the hotspot, such as shut down, reboot, or even connect to your favorite reflector. Well, there we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget, hit subscribe and like the video. I'll leave all the links down in the description below so that you can find this information easy. Until the next video, take care, stay safe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.